welcome back all my peasants and sinners. We're heading out into the mouth of the dragon. Rush hour traffic is uh, not very fun. I'm heading out into it instead of staying my ass at home where I belong. I'm headed out to a local spot. It's midweek, it's Wednesday. I, I did plan on having a video out tomorrow night uh, or tomorrow at some point. I'm trying to get back into the two, two videos per week thing, but uh, a good friend of mine uh, that I've known for about, gosh, 13 years now, uh, who still lives in the Phoenix area, is in town for work. He and his boss are having dinner. They invited me out. So, you know what? I'm not going to finish editing that video. I'm going to put that to the side so I can hang out with him. It's been a long time since we hung out, so I'm really looking forward to that. He asked me for recommendations. I don't know all the good spots down here <laughs> by any means. I probably should become more familiar with a lot of these places, seeing as how I've been here for like six years, but I just haven't. My fault. He said, oh, my boss is kind of a foodie, so he likes the local eats. I'm like, okay, uh, don't put me on the spot or anything. And then he says, anything is fine. You can't lead with my boss is a foodie and then follow that up with anything is fine. I got a lot of pressure here. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any stakes in the game. He's not my boss. Uh, I looked up this spot called La Terracita, which I've heard quite a few good things about. So I don't know if it's good or not. The place looks pretty cool looking at the pictures on Google Maps. So we're going to check it out. It is almost dark. I mean, it's 530 in the afternoon. Uh, but we'll pick up what we can pick up. Not sure how much videoing, filming I'll do at the restaurant. Uh, these guys aren't here for that. I've said it before. I don't like turning every social interaction into a, a video opportunity. I really don't. I feel kind of awkward about it. And not everybody wants to be on the internet or uh, be on video. And I, I completely understand and respect that. So there are so many neat places in Tampa that I always hear about. I see people talk about, oh, we check this out. And I always in my mind, I say, oh, I need to check that place out one day. And then I'm sure somewhere in the cobwebs of my old brain, their catalog, but I can never seem to recall anything that anyone has ever recommended, period. I don't know if it was all the drugs I did when I was younger or yesterday or all the beer I drank my entire life. I don't know what the hell is going on with that. I wish I could remember a lot of it. I find a couple spots that I like and I tend to just stick with those and I go to them over and over and over again. That's not cool. In my efforts over the last several months to get out and about more, to meet more people, to do more things, to be more active, that's one of the things that I said I was going to do a better job at. So yeah, when I started getting out more, that was a concentrated effort. It was a focus of mine. And I did say... You know, mostly internally, yeah, I want to get out there and find these local spots. But I, I use so much of my energy, really, on making myself get out of the house more, which is something that I still have to do. It's still not natural for me to get out there and do stuff. It used to be 20 years ago. Hell yeah. You wouldn't catch me inside. You'd catch me outside. Catch me outside. How about that? What does that mean? What I just said. But these days, yeah, I still have to force myself to do it. And I'm so awkward at that and it takes so much energy and focus that I'm, I'm bad at it. I'm the same way when it comes to like Instagram you know when I started posting more regularly on YouTube I thought you know a lot of the good YouTubers have you know really good Instagrams to kind of complement their YouTube channel and I just can't I tried right after the the uh, Forgotten Angels camp out I really made a solid attempt at posting reels once a day or stories a couple times a day and post quite often and I just couldn't keep up with it. Call me a boomer, whatever. I just, I don't know. It's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. Maybe as I find a, a better rhythm or a more steady rhythm, you know, I'm posting my YouTube content. The last several weeks, it's just been like once, once a week on Mondays. And I know, I know I can hear the, you know, the well-intended advice of, oh, just do what you can, when you can, do what makes you happy. And, uh, yeah, and I, and I get that, and, and I feel like that's something that people intend to sound, to come across as, you know, like the support system or whatever, but I don't believe in that, and I don't think people in general should believe in that either. I think it promotes a lazy lifestyle. Now, I'm pretty lazy on a lot of things. I'll be the first one to admit that, so don't think I'm coming at anybody calling you lazy. I'm plenty lazy in a lot of areas, but... 
That doesn't mean I don't have the philosophy of if you're comfortable, you're not growing. That's 100% what I believe. Do I always practice that? No, but I believe that. And I don't believe that I just do whatever, whenever. I don't like that approach at all. Um, you, you have goal. Everybody has some sort of goal, some sort of goal. It doesn't have to be big or lofty or you know tiny or whatever, but something. Goals aren't things that just occur naturally. Like they're not just happening to you on your trek through life. You have to do things to make those goals happen. So, yeah, I do think a lot of those responses are just canned responses. Like, if somebody's having a hard time doing whatever, we have these things that we're now in, in the contemporary world we live in are, are programmed to say those types of things. And I think when we complain about things, uh, we also expect to hear those kinds of things back just to validate our laziness. Anyway, we're almost to the restaurant, so we'll see you when we see you. So I recommended this place to my friend having nothing but uh, reading a couple comments here and there from others. I've never been here. It's a Cuban restaurant. It's pretty big. Uh, it looks like a big old house. Here, I'm gonna try to, there we go, get some light on my face. I was parked on the other side and I said, you know what? All the cars seem to be on this side. So I pulled over here and went inside. It's all like diner bar seating. And I thought, shit, man, I fucked up. There's no way the three of us are gonna find seating in here. There's a sign that says, this side is diner seating. The other side is sit down. So we'll probably end up back on the other side. I don't know, man. I just recommended the place because I heard the food was good. I didn't know I was gonna be all confused. Maybe it's not so confusing to everybody, but they got me. I'm pretty easy to get, I guess. Sucker born every minute, they say. So none of us really knew what to get, but um, we all ordered based on estimated or educated guesses. So a couple of us got Cuban sandwiches. This guy over here gets like this king's feast. Of course mine. Fricassee. That's a lot of food though. I'm probably gonna tear it up, but it's a lot of food. So I didn't introduce him in there, but it's my buddy Chris, we've known each other. We met on a, a beer brewing forum back in like 2008 or nine. Yeah, right around there. Yeah, we were yeah. first, I don't know if he had just started out, but I had just started out making Mr. Beer. And then it ends up we both started brewing for real. He's actually a national award winning, gold medal winning brewer. So I'm humbled to be in his presence. <laughs> but no, it was good seeing him again. I'll catch you guys on the bike later yeah. on. All right, YouTube, welcome back. It's been several days since uh, the dinner with my friend, and now I'm on my way to Jack and Colleen's house. I feel like those those two have become my regular riding buddies. And then we're gonna head over to Lakeland to a chopper show that uh, I only heard about it because I follow Weems Motor Company. I'm sure you guys all know Weems. I'm not always a huge fan of the chopper shows. I like what Weems does because he focuses on uh, triumphs and i know there's a big big following for triumph choppers but in general when i see choppers it's usually harley davidson based you know s and s stuff whatever i'm still sitting on all the parts to do these fork seals i just kind of been really lazy but extremely lazy with it maybe i'm just using it as an excuse but it does need brake pads on both front front calipers so I did order new brake pads Friday, so those should be in sometime this week. That way, while I have the calipers off already doing the fork seals, I know I talk about these goddamn fork seals way too much, but it is what it is. I ordered brake pads and I ordered a sleeve cylinder rebuild kit. After that, that's really, unless something happens, that's really all of the corrective slash preventative maintenance that I had on my list. I feel kind of bad. You know, I'm still selling the 1200. I feel kind of bad that I spent so much time uh, getting that motorcycle fixed up. I mean, I spent a lot of hours on that thing just to not ride it, just to have to redo some of those tasks with 1500. But it is what it is, man. Now on the next video or the video after that, we've got to have a conversation about the Royal Enfield. Some of you guys who follow my Instagram or if you're on Discord, you already know what I'm talking about. But some of you 
uh, aren't on those avenues of social media. But um, in, in a nutshell, uh, I've got a little bit of regret on a lot of things with the Royal Enfield. Not the motorcycle overall. I love that 650 Twin, like quite a bit. But I've got some major regrets and some costly regrets. And we're going to talk about that in a whole episode, I think. But uh, for now, let's head down to Jack and Colleen's. We'll see you up there and then we'll head over to Lakeland and check out Weems Motor Company and the rest of the choppers. All right, at Jack's house, we have an update on the concourse. A couple of you guys were asking uh, in the comments of that video, hey, what's what's going on with his bike? Fried some kind of board. What was the board? Tell me. Well, it was the, uh, you have the fuse box and then there's a board back behind it where all the relays are soldered into it. Soldered. Yeah, they're just five prong regular relays, but they're soldered into the board. Mm -hmm. And when the ignition switch fried out, it fried that, it fried the headlight, um, it fried the uh, the little box in the back that blinks my taillights. Yeah. Fried that. I mean, the whole electrical system just went and shut down. I mean, there was wires all, I mean, everything. So it got fucked. But he's getting it fixed at the ride factory, right? Correct. So they're knocking that out for him. But we got about a 30 minute ride ahead of us. I didn't really get a good close up of Colleen's bike. So we'll take a look at it. I think it's a nice looking Sportster. Are you comfortable on it? I love it. Nice. Harley girl. And now that uh, now that Jack has changed his exhaust on his Buell, he's a Harley boy now. Yeah. Full on, full on Harley boy. Buell's as close as a Harley I get. <laughs> close enough, let's head on down the road. All right, back in the same order we were in when we left for Savannah. <laughs> I know a lot of people when they ride and they make videos, they like to be leading the pack. I really don't care bringing up the rear. Uh, there's a little bit of a comfort level back here that I'm really okay with. We've got about a 30 minute ride over to Lakeland where I forgot actually what the name of the chopper show is. I know where it's at. I just don't remember what it's called. I guess it doesn't really matter what it's called. When I get there, I'll, I'll bring it up. I'll say the name of it and we'll move on from there. But Oh, I also want to tell you guys, yeah, yesterday I, I ordered stickers, final. They're uh, two inch circle stickers. Um, if I remember to, I'll put a, a little image up here. It's just my logo, but my logo, the MB on a Florida doesn't mean anything to somebody who's not familiar. I added the Mike Branch Rides channel name to the bottom, keeping in the same color scheme, same palette as you know the rest of the of the logo i really like leaning in on those colors and uh, the miami vice slash florida vibe that it has big fan of it i did want to say thank you to my new patrons um, after the last video i had three or four more patrons come through i really appreciate that i'm humbled i'm honestly and sincerely humbled that some of you out there want to support me in that way. And like always, you know, if it gets to a point where you can't, then by all means, please cancel it. I'll be there if you want to come back or if not, then don't worry about it. It's all good. I don't know what's going on, but there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bikes, including the three of us that came in outside probably about 15 cars out here either yesterday was a big day or this isn't i don't know not that popular amongst the community i have no idea what's going on but either way we're gonna come in and check it out see what we got going on go so that was a pretty fun time i don't really frequent chopper shows you know i haven't been to one that was just a chopper show before that was my first one uh, the chopper shows that i've been to in the past were either at a bar that exists as a bar outside of a chopper show or Gibtown bike fest where they had a whole lot of shit going on and the chopper show was on the side it wasn't really a big crowd as you saw so i don't know like i said if it was just not the busiest day of the two or people just aren't interested or if that's normal uh, it was 25 dollars to get in which i thought was kind of pricey 
I don't know where that money goes. Does it go just to that organization? Does it go into prizes? What does that go to? I was glad, really glad to be able to be there and say hi to Weems, you know, support what he's doing. I don't know him personally, even though he's a local guy, but I'm happy to be able to, you know, be there and, you know, see what he's doing. I do support what he does. I like his attitude, his approach. I love his focus and emphasis on triumphs. I want to reach out to him and ask him if he wants to do some work on the Royal Enfield. Not for free. I, I'd, I'd pay him, of course, but also as a collab. So we're heading down to River's Edge Bar and Grill. We've been there before. You've seen it on my channel. You've seen it on other channels. It's about an hour away from the RP Funding Center that we just were at. Beautiful day to be out on motorcycles. So whether it's an hour or an hour and 15 minutes, or however long it takes i'm gonna enjoy the ride and yeah we'll see you down there All right, so we're at River's Edge. We've been here for a little while. Life's on the way up. Good times as always. Drinking some beers, eating some food. These ladies came by doing a scavenger hunt, looking for a condom and a cop to handcuff them. I'm only raw dog, so no luck. They have to get somebody to leapfrog over. Jack volunteered to be the person leap leapt over. So we're doing it. We're gonna watch him do this shit. It's not the best leapfrog, but it's a leapfrog. We'll take it. All right, River's Edge. Once again, it was good to see you. My wife and grandson did come out, didn't get any footage. Well, he was having a ball, man. That dude loves motorcycles so much. That makes me so happy. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. I got to say, I do think that more of my kids would have been into motorcycles had i always put an emphasis on them there were a, a couple times you know even after having kids where i just didn't put any emphasis in motorcycles i had a motorcycle always i always had a motorcycle there's only been a couple times where i didn't have one for a year or two here and there and that was you know just for mostly financial reasons whatever uh there's been twice now where i've sold motorcycles just to help either get out of a pinch or you know help us move you know last year i sold the road glide because it was uh, while i was laid off for COVID, and i wasn't sure what was going on when my other kids were younger oh look at that that's fucking pretty holy shit! i always had motorcycles but i was always out i was in a motorcycle club off doing that kind of shit, not really putting focus on making sure my kids were exposed and that that's part of god i could do a whole episode i think on the differences between being a grandparent and a parent anyway it's getting kind of dark but we're gonna head down the road we're, i thought my day would have been over by now at six o'clock we have chick wrestling at burt's barracuda harley davidson tonight so we're going to do that i don't think i've ever done so much this late in the day on a sunday but we'll see you then All right, we're gonna wrap this one up right here. I actually don't really like uh, ending a video at the uh, editing station, but you get so much footage and you're like, where do I end it? So it's like, oh, it's right here. This is where we're gonna end it. I still had a little bit more footage that I could have put on this video, but man, this one was really busy. And if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. I got some things going on today. I'm gonna start recording a new video today. Once again, I appreciate everybody coming along, all your support so far. And until next time, we'll see you later.